World Series champions. Touch them all, Joe. You'll never hit a bigger home run in your life. Canada is the second largest land mass, the first nation of hockey, and the best part of North America. My name is Joe, and I am Canada. Welcome, everyone, to episode two of Canadians talking about Canadian music. I am joined by a panel of my fellow countrymen, some of whom joined me on the last episode, some of whom who didn't, and some of those that did <laughs> were not available this week. But thankfully, we have, you know, a, a few violent community members in Canada. So um, there's a talent pool that we can pull from so uh <laughs> to introduce everyone even though they probably need no introduction curtis from young lp lovers peter from music is a journey brian from embryonic robot and everyone's favorite grandpa glenn calloway from the basement <laughs> welcome everybody thank you for joining me tonight thank you thank you thank you nice should we start here. with o canada or we're okay <laughs> I, I, I got my Tim Hortons here, so, you oh, know. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> That's as Canadian as it gets, I guess. Um, no real theme tonight. Uh, I just figured we would ramble <laughs> about Canadian music and uh, wherever we end up is wherever we end up. Um, but I think, you know, kind of in the vein of when we did this last time, we just sort of showed some of our favorite Canadian artists or some of our Canadian favorite Canadian albums. And um, it's an opportunity for us. There you go. It's an opportunity for us to sort of share our love for our music, but also maybe to, to turn other folks outside of Canada on to uh, the really, really vibrant music scene that we've got here. So um I guess to that end, uh, I'm just going to throw it out there. I mean, there's no, there's no theme. There's no, uh, there's no, no uh, preset topic. But who wants to, uh, who wants to show something right off the bat? I will. No one else wants to. There you go. <laughs> no well, being the grandfather of the group, I go back to uh, the '60s, and uh, actually, a band that uh, lived in my neighborhood and was. Very popular. They were considered Canada's Rolling Stones, 1965, 66, 67, The Ugly Ducklings. Oh. And their albums came outside, which was their big selling album, I guess. It's just been reissued in the last couple of years on a, some kind of splattered purple vinyl. Wasn't that like but a record store album. reissue or something, I think? Killer album. Their big hit was called Gaslight. I have and, it on a 45 over here. And another song called Nothing, which was really their first song on the radio. But they were they were huge. They actually opened for the Stones at Maple Leaf Gardens. Oh, wow. Didn't they uh, start as a Stones cover band at first? Part, no, uh, no, not at all. all oh, really? Oh, I thought they I would, remember reading they that they used to do the standards the same as the Stones did. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like there they was they a band called... called uh, hey, Mama, Keep Your Big Mouth Shut. Uh, I love that song. Um... <laughs> Just in case you wonder, I don't know if you know that yeah, song. That's that, kind of an old standard too. Yeah, they do yeah, that's kind of, one of my faves they, off that album too. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah um, the Stones then might have covered the same song, but I'm not sure if they ever ever did a Stones cover. Actually, hey, Peter, you might be thinking of like the Blushing the... Brides. Oh, Blushing Brides! Oh, yeah. sir, the Blushing oh, Brides. They, they started uh, as a Stones, Stones cover band. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, much, they were Montreal. Stones Maybe. Band, pretty much. Yeah. 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 Did but, they? Uh, uh, did the did they go? You know, I mean, were they around through the '60s? I don't. I mean, I don't remember a lot of. I haven't seen a lot of albums other than that one, and I've got a couple forty-fives. But were they? What do you mean? Were they? Uh, I mean, did they, did they release? How, when when did they stop releasing stuff? I mean, were they sort of just uh, the around later? They did release an album later. They got back together and released an album. Um, 
which I can't remember what it was called, but they didn't have too many records actually. No, I, that's I guess that's where I was going. They seemed yeah. I seem from my memory anyway, it seemed to be just yeah. the sixties. Yeah, this is kind of the seminal album, and then there was another one that came out in like nineteen, maybe late seventies or something. They reunited and did something, but uh, yeah, yeah. I think there was that one there you're showing, and then there were a couple of singles after that. I think Gaslight was actually a single, right? Gaslight was actually a single, and the, and the only person who sang on it was the lead singer, Dave Bingham. He actually went to oh. New York and they recorded that, but they released oh, okay. it as the Ugly Ducklings. Yeah. So you Dave Bingham had a book a few years back. I was trying to get uh, a yeah. hold of it, but it's out of print and it's expensive now. I would love to read that. Yeah, he yeah. lived just around the corner from me. Did you know? Oh. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's Did all you know? about the, the young street music scene in the 60s there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, Yorkville, the old Yorkville scene, everything was all uh, Yorkville. Yeah. Sorry, that's what I meant. <laughs> yeah, they were huge. Yeah. Young street. Yeah. 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 No, that's that's a cool album. I like that one. I was looking a lot for uh, Canadian stuff in the 60s some years ago, and that was one of the first ones I came across. Yeah, it's it's great at record. If you like early stone stuff, you'll love it. Yeah. 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 You would have seen them a few times in in concert and things like that? Yeah, I saw them quite a few times, actually. And uh, oh, saw them my first time. I was going from grade 8 to grade 9. And our high school used to have this variety show at the end of every year. And I was in grade 8. My cousin was a year older than me. And he took me to the variety show. And the Ugly Ducklings, because they went to the high school, same high school, they were playing the variety show. So I saw them, oh. like, in really, you yeah, know, very cool. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, let's just go around the horn, Brian. Since you're next to Glenn on my screen, you're up next. If you All want, right. and no, that's fine. That's fine. Uh, I was looking at my stack of records, and I think I picked things that were a little esoteric, but <laughs> that's surprising. I, I, choose... yeah, I was gonna say, <laughs> I, I chose something that uh, I think uh, doesn't get a lot of discussion, and that's Canadian hip hop. So I chose the Dream Warriors, and now oh, the Legacy Begins from 1991 they only did four records and the last one i think was like early 2000s maybe 2002 or three uh and there were like hip-hop duo with uh, uh king lou and capital q right so kind of groundbreaking this is 1991 i think i said that uh fourth and broadway records and I this is the shrink wrap on here rob just for you but um <laughs> you know what you should do with that <laughs> I, I hear rip it and rip it i swear i'm gonna and, make a northern revolutions t-shirt that says grip it and rip it <laughs> 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 anyway, if you don't remember this band, you might know this. The big single off in here was uh, my definition of a boombastic jazz style, which cover which samples uh, Quincy Jones's Soul Bossa Nova. Which, of course, if you're Canadian and you're a certain age, you'll remember it from the quiz show definition because they use that. Oh in the my god! And then, of course, uh, you won a toaster. <laughs> That's right, you won twenty dollars. <laughs> And of course, after this, they it was used in uh, Austin Powers, of course, the the uh, original Quincy Jones track, which is fantastic. Of course, there are a couple other singles on here, but I, I guess I pulled this out because I don't think people think of hip hop when they think of Canada, and I don't think many people. I don't know if anyone. I've mentioned this record before. I don't know if anyone else talks about hip hop from Canada, so I think I wanted to show this one because you know, although they haven't made anything, you know, in quite a long time, I think this is a really important record, and uh, I, I love it. I think it's I think it's fantastic. Wow. I haven't thought about the Dream Warriors in so long. Like that, that, that was oh. a from the past right there. Wow. I probably I haven't should thought say, of them I, since the 90s. Yeah. I did see them in concert. I did see them live once too, which is kind of was really fun, right? It was kind of a great show. But right in that yeah. right in that 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 era was big uh uh hip hop time for me. I would I, the I golden era. School to watch uh Rap City on much music. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, that, I think it was for like me. A, yeah, might have been a half an hour show, maybe an hour tops. But I, I would record it on on cassette just to to get that. But that, they would have been definitely yeah. featured on much music. Absolutely, yeah. Very good, Peter. You got something fun to show us? Yeah. Uh, well, I kind of went with what you mentioned in the email and just prepared something based on each of those. So I guess for okay. now, what I'll show is, uh, all right, here, 5440. Yeah. So this is a band that I actually, I used to confuse them with uh, UB40. So I thought they were a reggae band and I never got into them. And it just so <laughs> happened earlier this year, I was doing a video about Canadian songs that were covered by other bands. And I happened to find out that 
Hootie and the Blowfish, I Go Blind, was actually done by 5440, which I didn't know, which is really strange because they're from the municipality of Delta, which is right next to Surrey, where I grew up. So um, I've been getting into their catalog and I find, oh, I know that song. Oh, I used to hear that one on the radio. And I'm getting pretty close to the point where um, I'm going to have everything. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've even tracked down some compilations that I got, I, I ordered just because there were two songs, previously unreleased songs on that one. And one album I bought, I found out that that is a special edition with three bonus songs and two songs are missing on that one that are on the original. So now I've gone and ordered the original as well. So um, what yeah, that? What like I'm going to be a studio completist for uh, 5440. The funny thing is, like, whenever I get into a band, I start checking a lot of stuff on YouTube to see what are people saying about their discographies? Are they ranking the albums? And there's almost nothing. Yeah, they're they're a great band. And, and I, I don't think that there's a lot of their albums on vinyl. I mean, there's the, the first one, the self-titled one. I think Brian's got that one. I've got it. Um, and you see, they just reissued Smiling Buddha Cabaret last oh, yeah. year on vinyl for the, it might have been for the first time i don't know that i've seen any other 5440 vinyl fight yeah. fight for love from 89 is on vinyl i have a copy of that oh yeah. great yeah i like I don't that know about after that though yeah yeah and then there's that um, I, there's the one that what's it called is it, it's kind of brown it's got like a microphone or something like it's called like yeah Sins uh, Sins or something. yeah I don't know yeah. if that's on vinyl. That's my favorite of their albums, and I really, if it isn't on vinyl, I wish that would get reissued. That would, that would be you, great. You know what's funny, Rob? I was listening to that one, and I thought, this is really mellow. Like, most of their albums have a good mix, good variety of stuff, and I thought that one is a really mellow album. It almost reminds me of later Blue Rodeo albums, where almost yeah. every track is mellow. So it's yeah. funny you should yeah, say I can that. See that. <laughs> yeah, well, that fits for sure, for sure. Yeah. That's a good one. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that's what I got to say about that. And now I got to open the door for the cat. So, uh, Curtis, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm popping off here, trying to, yeah, do things in the background as well. So I apologize for that. Um, all right. Yeah. So, kind of along Brian's line, I was thinking kind of maybe some music that doesn't necessarily ring Canada, right? You might not think about it as, uh, being from Canada, like hip hop, uh, and this one I showed on my channel. I did a review of the of the album actually, but I'm going to show uh, this one here uh, is uh, Jamila, uh, a reggae artist uh, based out of Halifax, uh, Nova wow. Scotia, here on the east coast. Interesting. Uh, hmm. Yeah, and so this is this is her uh, Roots Girl is the name of the album, and uh, it came out I think two years ago now, 2022. Uh, and yeah, she's got a bit of a, uh, her father, I guess, is Earl Chena Smith, who's a famous reggae guitarist, she played with the Wailers and pretty much any big name in reggae music, really. And she just last week released her sophomore album, um, and it's really good as well. Uh, so that's, uh, yeah, in terms of kind of like, oh, you know, I don't really associate reggae but there's actually a, a pretty decent reggae scene here in canada and so uh, this album is great the, the 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 standout track for me on here is the title track roots girl uh fantastic chant their names is a really powerful song too about uh kind of off uh after george floyd death and things so yeah uh, something that we don't often think about with canada so i thought i'd feature that and hey and and that she's based on the East Coast. Uh, that's a, that's another rarity too, I think. So, uh, I mean, when one yeah, thinks reggae, they think that Halifax. Halifax <laughs> has a really interesting blend of people, yeah. like musical styles. Yeah, absolutely. I, I know Halifax, of course. For well, I mean, Rankin family are actually Cape Breton Island, but I know for a lot of this, like uh, East Coast Celtic influence stuff as well yeah. as that whole 80s underground scene like sloan and jail and all those guys but um i found out they've got a, a black metal scene in halifax and a, a number of other surprises one is a rare album of pop tunes by korean immigrant girls from the late 70s 
and they all lived in Halifax and formed a band and like an all girls, like a singer group. Anyway, I don't think they played instruments, but yeah, they, they recorded an album in the late seventies and it's a really rare one to get now. That's crazy. Oh, and, and later on, they all returned back to Korea after, I don't know how many years, but that's, that just like Halifax is just a place that like, a, you know, people get sucked in and <laughs> all sorts of varieties <laughs> of people and make albums. <laughs> well, there's always music there, right? There's, there's a very strong musical tradition. You can't go to any, you know, bar or restaurant without someone playing some live music. So it's, yeah. Uh, well, it, it's isolated kind of from the rest of the country. So uh, that blends uh, really kind of, ignites everybody into developing a, a regional style kind of like or their own scene right that's right yeah. yeah on her on her uh her new album there's a song called uh, east coast family and she's got like some nova scotia hip-hop artists on there and she's got uh uh someone playing the fiddle on it it <laughs> doesn't sound like it would work but it works really well <laughs> I made notes. I'm checking that one out. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah, I want to hear that. <laughs> Very Mary cool. Music is on the fiddle. All right. I've Get gone. Blue Rodeo out of the way. No, I'm not doing Blue Rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> but what I thought I would do, and I mentioned this as a possible train of thought, and it, it, I'm going to show an artist that everyone in the world knows that is Canadian, that I don't identify necessarily as, you know, you don't think of them as a Canadian artist. And it, I thought of it because he's playing an hour away tonight in London, Ontario. But it's someone that anyone watching this from outside of Canada knows and knows his music. And I thought, when I show the album, we'll all go around the horn and give our thoughts as, we know what the world thinks of this individual. What do we think, as Canadians, of this international Canadian export, if we will? And I mean... Yeah. One of the most successful Canadian musicians ever is Brian Adams. And listen, I know it's not cool to like Brian Adams and everyone in the violin community shits on him. And you know, it's fine. Whatever. Uh, I like him. I'm a big fan. Not that all of his stuff is great, but I love him. I think he's one of our most successful musical exports. Is his music um you know, sophisticated and, and innovative like somebody like Rush. No, it's not. It's it's top 40 radio rock and roll, but not that there's anything wrong with that. The man's made an incredible living. He's been touring for <laughs> 45 years. Like I said, he's playing down the road in London, Ontario tonight. So I think everyone that's watching knows Brian Adams, but I'm curious to get what do Canadians think of Brian Adams? Anyone have any thoughts? I used to be a big fan, but for some reason his his voice started to grate on me after a while. That that was, <laughs> but you know, summer of '69, and he had he had a lot of great songs. There's mm. no doubt he's a major talent. But uh, I, I don't listen to him anymore. But I, I was a fan at the time for sure. Brian, what do you think? Uh, right? Well, I used to like him. Uh, <laughs> you know, I had I have the. I have some of his records on on vinyl, of course, and uh, I liked Cuts Like a Knife fairly well, that record. And Reckless, of course, it was everywhere, so that's fine. Then I think I think I just lost track. Uh, the one after that, Into the... What was it called? Something about... What's it into, called? The, into the Fire. Into Fire, Into Fire, which I also have. And the one you held up, I found in the thrift shop for $1.99. But it didn't, it didn't really appeal to me. But, I, I, you know, I still... When Cuts Like a Knife comes on the radio, yeah, I, I really like it. But there's a lot of his music that I have not, never heard because I sort of lost... Sure. Which, well... Went in a different direction, let's say. So I, I don't even know it. Well, but, I think you know, that... I... go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, you know, the, the track that really put me off was the was it from Robin Hood? Everything I do, I do it. Is that the song I do? I didn't yeah, like yeah. that, and that kind of really soured me. I guess maybe, but sure. there's no question he's got he's talented, and he wrote songs for other art acts that most people don't even know about. So yep. you know, there's there's that too. So talented for sure. Sure. Peter Curtis, the song he did with Tina Turner's "The Killer Track." It's only oh, love. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, great that one. He did a he did a great two on Bonnie Raitt as well. Nice, called Rock really Great song. It's a Bonnie Raitt song that he plays on. It's great. Uh, I'm 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 a fan. I'm 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 in it. I'm in it for yeah, Brian. Man. So I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go for it. Uh, yeah, not not a huge fan. I mean, uh, you know, I've got Reckless. I've got uh, uh, another album. I can't name that mistaken me right now. Uh, on vinyl, and I've got the same one you held up on CD. Uh, 
not when I reach for a lot, but you know, if it's on the radio, I'll I'll I'll, I'll yeah. listen to it. You know, I, I I'm yeah, I'm I'm a fan. I'm not I don't know his deep cuts or anything, but his radio hits and things. Sure. I'll 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 even go as far as to say I, I can even take everything I do. You know, I'm I'm, I'm okay with that. You know. <laughs> 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 a popular opinion amongst Canadians, but there you go. I'm a big fan, and I can't even take that song. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Peter? Any thoughts? Yeah, well, Brian Adams was kind of interesting because uh, Cuts Like a Knife came out just around the time I was getting into music. But I was going more in the ACDC, Judas Priest, Iron Maiden direction. So Brian Adams was just on the other side of the fence for me. It's like, it's okay. But my dad who was a guy from the 50s who was into jazz and, and other stuff, he actually liked Brian Adams's voice. So my sister and I got him the Cuts Like a Knife cassette, <laughs> which he played Sunday mornings while making pancakes sometimes. Nice. But yeah, for me, Brian Adams has always been, he started out like just on the other side of the fence for me and, and got farther and farther away. So um, sure. I've never been into him, but I always figure like any Canadian that makes it really big in the world, I'm happy for them. So, like, yeah. I've got no problems with Nickelback or Justin Bieber or Celine Dion. I have no problems with them. If they're making lots of money and making people happy around the world, then great. Good for us. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. So, and I do actually thought... have, um, I have this, which uh, actually is the wrong cover, but this is the album he did with Sweeney Todd back if in wishes were horses. six or so. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the one thing I got to say I don't like about it is um, his voice sounds really weird. And it's I read tough. it because they sped it up a little bit. Yeah, so oh, I really? would have liked to have heard his his natural 16-year-old voice. But the yep. music on here is pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, the problem with that is he replaced Nick Gilder when Nick Gilder left Sweeney Todd. And they were trying to make him sound like Nick Gilder. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's a shitty album. I have it too. I don't, it's the only one I don't have on vinyl. But it's easy to find. But. Yeah, yeah, actually, the only song, the track that I like best on here is the instrumental. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the music is really cool. Yeah. So, I mean, to, to put a button on it, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm a big fan. But, uh, you know, like most people, the good stuff is the early stuff. You know, yeah. Cuts Like a Knife, Reckless, Waking Up the Neighbors. You know, those are the ones that if anyone has, that's probably what they have. And his later stuff especially the post 2000 stuff is you know <clears throat> diminishing returns i would say <laughs> uh in terms of enjoyment though his last album was actually really good but um yeah I i'm a fan i've seen him he's great um still puts on a good show and to peter's point hats off to anyone that can make it out of here <laughs> you know i hate i mean i'm such a proponent of, of of this country but you know it's it's not easy to make a living as a musician so if someone can succeed and be successful globally which he undoubtedly is hats off to him i don't really think he's canadian anymore i mean he is in terms of you know he's born here but he lives in england he hasn't you know he's got he doesn't He's not part of the Canadian music scene, which a lot of the artists that we talk about are. So, I mean, he's he's kind of moved past that, and whether that's a good thing or not, who knows? Um, yeah. So, I mean, hats off to him for making it big, but I, I don't really consider him a Canadian anymore. I mean, he is by birthright, but he ain't making hey, Canadian music. So. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I haven't lived there for 25 years. I'm still Canadian. Exactly. But he's, <laughs> he, I wouldn't consider him a Canadian musician. I guess, yeah, I know what you mean. Of, in terms of yeah, got lots 5440 of... or you know any of the others that we're talking about, it, it, he's moved past that. And I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but you know, hats off to him. So, Well, you know, a lot of our really big artists continue to live in Canada. They could have moved off mm -hmm. to the States or whatever, but a lot of them stay here. Uh, stay here, stay there, where you guys are. <laughs> True. Yeah, that's the ones I like. Well, that's the ones I appreciate the most, the ones that stayed. Yeah. Yeah. I was watching Getty Lee the other day. He was on uh, Conan O'Brien's podcast, and they had him in via video conference, and, and, and Conan, you know, welcomes him to the podcast. He's like, where are you calling in from today? He goes, I'm at home in Toronto. And like you know, good for you. You're one of the, yeah. probably the most famous rock star we've ever made. 
<laughs> and you still live in Toronto. I mean, hats yeah. off to you. So yeah, good for him. Yeah, good for him. Uh, Glenn, we're going back around the horn. You got something else? Uh, I'm sticking for? with the 60s still. Do uh, I'm going to go chronologically here. I think the greatest blues <laughs> album that ever came out of Canada, 1969, it's always one of my favorite albums, was a band called McKenna Mendelssohn Mainline. Oh, Stink. Yeah. Incredible blues album. Great guitar. Mike Mendelssohn, Joe, uh, or, or Mike McKenna, Joe Mendelssohn had this growly kind of voice, played harmonica. Uh, some long jammy stuff and then some, you know, kind of just shorter blues tracks, but uh, great blues album. They're, they, they're kind of hit back then was called Better Watch Out. Um, that was the 45 off of this album, but uh, these guys were amazing. They put out that and then they put out this album too called Blues, which is a lot of the same tracks off of the Stink album, but just done a little differently. It's uh, this came out after, but I think they were. It was recorded before, as kind of the demos, maybe or something. But uh, if you've never heard McKenna Mendelssohn Mainline, you should check them out if you like blues. Good one. Is that an easy album to find, Glenn? Uh, yeah, it's uh, it's uh, never been reissued, but you can find it. But uh, it probably costs like twenty five bucks or something, or thirty bucks to pick it up. That's or not bad. Yeah. Okay. That's not bad. Sounds like something I'd be into. Brian. All right. Well, uh, I, I almost picked Metric, but I thought they're maybe a little too well-known. But instead, I picked some stuff from the lead singer, Emily Haynes, uh, because, in my opinion, her solo records are actually better than Metric's. And there's, no, there's not that many. There's this album, Knives Don't Have Your Back, Emily Haynes and the Soft Skeleton. There's this EP, What is Free to a Good Home. And then there's this uh, record that came out, I guess it was a few years ago now. Um, What's it called? <laughs> I can't remember what the name is called. Anyway, um, I think she is fantastic. She, of course, she's also a member of Broken Social Scene. Uh, and uh, the, the music that was quite different. I remember reading reviews where some people were uh, bought this record and thought they weren't really happy with it because they're expecting, you know, Metric's new wave revival kind of sound. And this is not that at all. It's very mellow and introspective and dark in some ways. And it's often just her and a piano. And there's some really killer tracks on here. Like if you've never heard it, you should check out, you know, Our Hell, Dr. Blind. I mean, he, she does a song called The, the Maid Needs a, uh, sorry, The Maid Needs a Maid, which is a sort of riff on the Neil Young track, The Man Needs a Maid. And I think this is like, this is a really terrific record. As is, as is, uh, as are her other stuff too, like this, this EP that came out, I think is really good. There's only, uh, well, there's six tracks on here. And then this one, which I think is really fantastic. Um, Choir of the Mind. I keep forgetting the name of this thing. This is a double, which is which is pretty cool. So her voice, I think, is really spectacular. She has a really clear, um, really uh, interesting vo uh, voice. I think she's, yeah, it's weird to say, but I think I like her better than Metric. I wish she'd do some more solo stuff because I think it's really good. Good, good. Right. Peter. Yeah, well, all right then. Um talked about 5440 who are from Delta. So I'm going to talk about the other side of Surrey. This is a band from Langley, <laughs> municipality of Langley. This is a band called La Chinga, which is a swear word in Spanish. <laughs> but uh, we've got four albums out. This is, this is their third one. What's it called? <laughs> Beyond the Sky. And they are basically a 70s revival type hard rock trio. Um, started around 2011 and released their fourth album last year. They are really heavily, heavily into the 70s vibe. Their videos show a lot of like um, wizards and type what fantasy type artwork or cartoons, a lot of things like motorcycle stunts and um, what like those uh, hot race cars, girls in, in really short shorts, all that kind of thing. So it's like this, they're really stuck in the 70s, but their music is just a little heavier than what you'd probably get out of the 70s. So a, a really grooving rock band out of Langley, <laughs> basically Vancouver based, but uh, and they, they mostly tour about in Canada. They go down to the States a bit, and I think they've been over to Europe once or twice as well, but you know, not a major player out there, but a band that, that's really good at what they do. I just Googled them. They look like they're from the 70s. That's I, I'm going to check them out. 
Never heard of them. <laughs> yeah, before. I did um I did a video last year introducing five bands, and the first half of that video was all La Chinga. And oh, okay. I, I was able to get in touch with them and ask if I could play samples of their music in my video, which they agreed to. So um Oh, wow. yeah, there's a video like that. Everybody I feature in that video, just about everyone said I could use music samples. So, but the first half is all La Chinga with a track oh, from each of their out. albums. Yeah, no, they're, they're pretty cool. There's one song, Killer Wizard. That was the song that got me into the band. It's off this album I showed here. Their latest one came out just after the pandemic. So it's a little bit darker in vibe than the previous ones. And their second album also has some of this... Uh, 70s acoustic you know mountain rock type feel to some of the songs so each album has what? something slightly different the first one's got a track with some theremin playing on it which is pretty wild that sounds so, like a really cool uh, band yeah actually I, I really like them and uh you know they're just not all that well known but they're, they're really cool i'm gonna check that out me yeah. too just don't go Lord around yeah. in the spanish community saying la chinga out loud <laughs> 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 Fair enough. Curtis, show us something cool. All right. Well, uh, I was thinking about uh, sort of the Canadian experience, right? And sort of uh, a lot of the music that comes out of Canada comes out of that singer songwriter kind of tradition and the stories. Uh, and so I was trying to find an album that exemplified this for me, right? And, I, and that I related to through the stories and whatnot. And Rob, you're going to know this. Well, I know you know this album. You're a big fan. Uh, oh, I know what you're going to show. You know, you know <laughs> already, right? Uh, yep. you, maybe you have it in your pile there. I don't know. I uh, don't, because I figured you might show it. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh, Adam Baldwin. Uh, oh, yeah. There it is. Oh. Um, just a fantastic, and Rob. You can probably talk more about uh, Adam than I can. I know you, uh, you. You know his backstory a lot better. I, I, I think I'm Adam Baldwin fan number one. I think. What <laughs> 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 really love about this album uh, are the the the, the songwriting uh, through. I mean, it's, musically, it's fantastic as well. But uh, lucky he got off for shooting that that woman on the movie set. What was that? <laughs> not, not the same <laughs> Other <Adam> Baldwin. <laughs> but yeah, no, the stories here, I just find them so relatable, right? They're all written from this area, from uh, kind of Nova Scotia. There's the, the lighthouse in Little Lorraine. Uh, it's a great little story about, you know, shipments of cocaine coming up by sea. Great and, little story. In the end, his uncle shoots him in the head and murders him. But it's oh, a no. great story. It's a <laughs> story. How do you write this song? It's a happy story. Yeah. It's a good story. It, it, is, it is an absolutely fantastic story. You're right. And it's it completely made up, by the way. They're they're making they're 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 shooting a movie right now in Lewisburg called uh, A Light Has and Little Lorraine. And I don't know if it's Related to this song or not? Anyway, uh, that's just a little aside. They 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 put out a casting call for extras and things. Anyway, oh really? That's yeah. cool. Uh, so I don't know if it's related or not, but it's based on an urban legend that there were drug runners running cocaine from Boston up to Halifax in caskets and then dumping them overboard, and fishermen were picking them up. That's the legend, apparently. Whether <laughs> it's it's true or not, it's an urban legend. So number. Uh... Causeway Road is a fantastic song about, you know, uh, uh, Danny Fingers. Danny Fingers, his neighbor, if I'm not mistaken. Who's a real guy. His name's Donnie. There you go. <laughs> I can tell you the story behind every one of these songs. <laughs> and they're just, they're just all fantastic. And I just, yeah, if, 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 if you're not familiar with it and you like sort of, uh, this is more, more folk rock, I guess. Uh, yeah. uh, if you like folk rock at all, check it out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Um, I'm just gonna I'm gonna add on to your commentary of this album. Yes, please do. Uh, it is in my top ten albums that I've heard in my entire life. It is wow. really that good. And I have said, Adam started off as a he's Matt May's guitar player. He was he was a he was a, he was a rock musician and put out uh, two EPs and a full length album before this, and they're very rock, like very rock. Here was Springsteen. Springsteen. 
Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. But he went folk on this. And what he was trying to do is he was trying to write a Stan Rogers record. That is what he said he wanted to do. And the stories that he has crafted in this, I mean, bold statement, and I need some concert buddy oven mitts to say this, but his storytelling on this album rivals some of the stories that Gordon Lightfoot has written. I think they're that good. Um, just a phenomenal, phenomenal album. I've never, I've been to, he's from Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, which is outside Halifax. I've only been there once in my life for a day. So I know nothing about the cultural experience of living in Halifax or Nova Scotia or the Maritimes. But I feel like I do after listening to that album. You feel like you know what it's like to be a struggling fisherman or, you know, whatever the case may be. They, he has done an absolutely great job of just sort of painting these sonic pictures of sort of the grittier side of life of the Maritimes. And it is absolutely brilliant. Why it wasn't nominated for a Juno, I have no idea. It's that good. Yeah, I was surprised by that as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, just in the, what's the one Rob where they're talking? The, the guy is he's he's in jail uh, and he gets out of jail. He, he gets out of jail. Oh, that's um. I can't remember the title track. Shit. Um. Anyway, it's uh, oh, plea to Saint Peter, is it? Yes, plea to Saint Peter. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the, I just like I, I I recognize that character and I know that character and it's just, it's I don't know it's. Uh, it's it's it's, yeah, it's really good. He did, he did a uh, he did a like an Instagram story the other day where he was dropping his kids off at the bus for school and they drove down the street. And he, there's a gas station. He goes, "See that there? That used to be Gerald Burgess racetrack." Right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, funny. But anyway, fantastic pick. One of my favorite albums of all time. I shut it from the rooftops anytime I'm talking about Canadian music. Please listen to Adam Baldwin. He is absolutely incredible and um he cripplingly shy in terms of he you know he's he he, he doesn't take the praise well he's like yeah, thanks but you know and he just didn't want to go dude you are incredible like but he's he's way too <laughs> modest he, he is absolutely phenomenal so i don't tour with alan doyle right now for the third leg right. of that tour so oh really yeah yeah <clears throat> Good one. Mm. Okay. Uh, what am I going to show? I'm going to show. Ooh, let's see. Uh, oh, I can show this one. Some blues. I have very little blues. I know nothing about the blues. Surprising us. <laughs> the Downchild Blues Band. Oh, yeah. Donnie Walsh. This is uh, called Road Fever. This came out in uh, 1980. Um, most people may not know. I mean, Americans have probably never heard. There's a lot of many Canadians have actually never heard of the Downchild Blues Band. They've been together forty some odd years. Actually, uh, the Blues Brothers were. Uh, well, that's where I'm going with this. Yeah. So Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi, the Blues Brothers, the movie, um, the Saturday Night Live skit is based on these guys because Dan Aykroyd's from Kingston, Ontario. <clears throat> Must be something in the water in Kingston, Ontario. <laughs> Ryan Adams. And You're either a musician or a, pri or a convict. <laughs> there you go. There's a lot of the tragically right. hip. There's a lot of people who come from Kingston. Anyway, um, you know, back in the, I don't know, 80s, early 80s, late 70s, whenever, you know, when these guys play all over Canada, but Ackroyd would see them in bars and, you know, they'd, Bonnie Walsh would have a suit on playing or whatever. And this is what inspired Dan Ackroyd to create the blues brothers huh. phenomenal band. I've seen them live a few times. I met Donnie Walsh a couple times, super nice dude when I met him and just a great, again, to my ears. Great. I don't know shit about blues, but this is an <laughs> incredibly enjoyable record. And they've, they probably have, I don't know, 15 albums by this point. I have no idea, but and none of them are bad. They're all this. They're, they're all, all fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So, if you like the movie The Blues Brothers, it all came from the Downchild Blues Band. Love that. Hey, folks. Sorry to interrupt the regularly scheduled programming, but uh, me and the panel got a little long in the tooth 
when we recorded that. So I'm going to split this episode up into two episodes uh, or else you're going to be here for quite a while. So keep an eye out for, I guess, episode three of Canadians talking about Canadian music, where Glenn and Peter and myself and Brian and Curtis wrap up our discussion. So stay tuned for that. And thank you for watching. Catch you on the flip side.